because when you're thinking of coffee, cats, and clouds, the first thing that comes to mind is caterpillar trucks, right? <laughs> I'm Andre Minkoff, the founder of Trademark Factory, and in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about yet another trademarking screw up. This time around, it's Caterpillar going after a coffee shop. Ah! Let me start by reading from the article. And as always, you can find the link in the description below. And then it'll be one of these episodes when I actually go through the legal paperwork and give my comments on that as well. So let's just jump right into it. Santa Cruz coffee shop with cat in its name hit with cease and desist from Caterpillar Inc. Santa Cruz coffee shop cat and cloud coffee said it received a cease and desist from Caterpillar Inc. because they used the word cat in their shop name and merchandise. The large corporation had trademarked cat and has taken legal action against the small business to stop them from using it. Owners of the small business say they first received the letter in August of 2018. It seemed ridiculous. So we responded and uh, got a lawyer, obviously, said Jared Truby, co-owner of Cat and Cloud Coffee. We asked them to further explain their case, asked them to drop it, as we are in a completely different industry. They didn't want to. So we went back and forth a few times and called them out for bullying. Truby says when they opened their shop almost three years ago, they couldn't have predicted something like this happening. Could anybody imagine a $54 billion machinery company coming after a coffee company? I don't think that's even in the cards, said Truby. The first biggest thing they want us to do is not print the name Cat and Cloud on anything again. I think this is unbelievable. I don't think that's gonna hold up. Well, that's not really what Caterpillar is asking for. Uh, Caterpillar may be buoys. We're gonna discuss this in a minute, but they're not idiots. Uh, so let's, let's keep going. Some customers agree. I don't think anyone correlates the Caterpillar company with their big yellow massive trucks with a small cafe, says uh, Rick Tofik of San Jose. I mean, I never thought about Cat and Cloud and Caterpillar in the same sentence until we heard about the lawsuit. I don't think they have a legitimate case, added Emma Davis of San Jose. I don't think I would ever confuse the two of them. It doesn't make sense to me. Caterpillar Inc. says its only concern is over apparel, providing Action News with the statement. Caterpillar serves customers around the world, many of whom earn their livelihood with one or two machines, and often a good pair of work boots. We value all of them and strive to provide exceptional products and services. This means we have a responsibility to protect and maintain the brand they love and rely on every day, including our existing trademarks. We are not suing Cat and Cloud, not targeting a small business, and not focused on Cat and Cloud's primary interest, coffee. We're simply asked the US Trademarks Office to remove Cat and Cloud's trademark registration on footwear and apparel only, products for which Caterpillar has long-standing trademarks and a considerable business. We hope to resolve this issue quickly. Now, this is a very important comment. So they say, we're not suing them. It's not a trademark infringement lawsuit. They're not going after money. They're not doing any of that stuff. Second, what they're trying to do is they're trying to cancel one of two trademark registrations that Canon Cloud has. One registration, as you'll see, is for just coffee. Uh, the other one is coffee plus apparel. So what Caterpillar is trying to do is to kill the part of the registration that deals with apparel. So Cat and Cloud's claim that 
what Caterpillar wants to do is stop Cat and Cloud from putting their name on anything is just not accurate. It's just not true. So let's keep reading. Facing this legal battle has been stressful for the owners of the coffee shop. Well, no doubt. But Truby says they're not giving up. I guess the good news is if someone is intimidated by a small little company in Santa Cruz, it means we're doing something right, said Truby. It leads me to believe we're doing something that's far more important than I can see right now. Delusion of grandeur, anyone? <laughs> uh, Truby says they spent nearly $10,000 already dealing with this case. He says, not being able to sell apparel for extra income will have an impact on both employees and the business. A petition has also been started on change.org asking for 7,500 signatures to tell Caterpillar Inc. to stop bullying Cat and Cloud and other small businesses. They have almost met their goal. Okay, so it's actually a pretty interesting case. So the optics uh, don't look very good for Caterpillar on the PR side, right? Because again, uh, if you position it from the perspective of big trucks versus a tiny little coffee shop, there's no way there's any confusion there, right? Uh, and uh, that's what uh, Cat and Cloud has been trying to do. They're saying, well, we're the little guys, we're a coffee shop, we don't sell trucks, nobody in their right mind would ever be confused into believing that our shirts come from the big truck company, right? Uh, on what's really happening here is that Caterpillar says, look, you can make your shirts all you want, as long as they say both Cat and Cloud, what we don't want you to do is be able to own a trademark on Cat and Cloud in class 25 that covers apparel and footwear because that's what we have our trademark for cats in the same category. And so what Cat Caterpillar is really upset about is and what they're trying to prevent is others from being able to add something to cat in the same category and get a trademark, right? Cat and cloud, cat and mouse, cat and a truck and whatever, right? So they're being defensive of their property in the cat trademark in class 25. But let's go through the actual documents because there's quite a lot to learn from them. All right, so this is the original petition for cancellation. So this is what Caterpillar is trying to do. And by the way, before we go there, the interesting thing here is that they're trying to use cancellation proceedings uh, and uh, they didn't oppose the mark. So somehow the trademark application filed by Cat and Cloud did not end up on Caterpillar's radar when the short opposition window was open, right? If the big truck company saw that, and I mean, look, everyone, every big brand owner uses one or the other form of uh, monitoring software or services offered by companies to monitor who's filing what trademark where. It's what the Trademark Factory calls weekly confusion watch service. Uh, and uh, sometimes you just don't see things, right? Because software is software. Uh, and uh, so somehow they missed whether it was human factor or software factor, one way or the other, they didn't notice when the application by Canon Cloud was published for opposition, they didn't oppose, the trademark got allowed, the trademark got registered. So now, sometime later, they are trying to cancel that registration partially. And normally, like in vast majority of the cases, cancellation proceedings are about non-use. Right? You say that uh, this, this registered trademark, but uh, it doesn't look like the owner is using it, the mark is abandoned, let's cancel it so somebody else can get a go at the same mark. Now, this is very different uh, because they're saying that the mark should never have been registered because of a prior registered trademark. So let's go through this. It, it'll be an interesting one. There's some summary. 
uh, and uh, they're saying they're only going after, so they're going after this trademark, right? Canon Cloud Coffee, LLC. Uh, that's the registration number. Uh, and uh, they're going after these products and services only. All goods and services in this class are subject to cancellation, namely clothing, shirts, hats, tank tops, sweatshirts, socks, underwear, shorts, and shoes. Okay. Grounds for cancellation, priority and likelihood of confusion, and also dilution by blurring. Okay. And so they say, well, Caterpillar says, here are our marks that we have. So we have cat for a bunch of stuff, including class 25 for uh, clothing. We have this mark also for class 25 for footwear. We have this mark uh, for, among other things, work, sport, and casual clothing. So namely, bah, 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 all those different things. Here's another one for 25 and another one. Now this is class 35 retail store services in the field of clothing, footwear. Uh, they got cat engineer durability also for class 25. They got another cat uh, like this one uh, for watches and some, some, some other merchandise. They got this cat for class 18. Uh, leather imitation goods. So they, they basically say, we've got a lot of trademarks. We've got uh, design marks, we've got word marks, and they all cover something to do with item of items of clothing. So here's the actual petition. They say, well, uh, Petition Caterpillar believes that is being and will be damaged by the continued registration of Cat and Cloud Coffee LLCs registration number, whatever, for the mark Cat and Cloud for clothing, namely shirts, hat, tank top, sweatshirts, socks, underwear, shorts, and shoes in class 25 and petitions to cancel it. Allegations with respect to Caterpillar are based upon actual knowledge. Okay, so here's the beginning of it. They say, well, Caterpillar, everyone knows us. We have famous marks and uh, they're going on and on and on and on about uh, what efforts they took to make their brand known to so many people. Okay, so they're going through their revenues, 54 billion, okay, sorry, sorry, $45 billion. Uh, they're going through all that stuff. Their, their Fortune 500 list. Uh, they've uh, got expansive trademark licensing program. So again, they're just trying to build up the value of the brand and what it means to them. Okay, popularity more than 40 years, expanded the name to include a wide range of apparel, headwear, footwear, bags, accessories, all of those wonderful things. Here are some examples. They're showing screenshots. They're actually selling them on the website. So it's not just something that a uh, company wears internally, like gives out to employees uh, so that they can you know, do something inside. They're actually selling those products to the market, to the world. And that's what they're showing with the, the, the website pictures. They have got uh, hoodies, they've got socks, they've got shoes, they've got hats. They've got all those other things that are listed in Cat and Cloud's trademark registration. So uh, they also say uh, that all of these items that Caterpillar sells are immensely popular and have been extensively advertised and marketed throughout the US. Okay, uh, and such products have resulted in sales in the tens of millions of dollars annually. Not bad, not bad, uh, because I mean, there are so many companies out there that clothing is their specialty apparel is the only thing they sell and they don't get to tens of millions of dollars annually for a truck company to sell that much of apparel merchandise it's quite an accomplishment uh right so they're they keep building up the value of the brand they keep explaining why this is a big deal for them so they say they've been promoted online uh all their efforts newspapers Bah, 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 bah. Uh, they also say that 
they have obtained, now listen to this, to protect the Goodwill in the cat mark, Caterpillar has obtained several thousand trademark registration in more than 150 countries. Several thousand trademark applications. So, you know, of course they're a huge company, but just the mere idea of having several thousand trademark registrations when a lot of business owners who say they got big dreams, who say they want to become important, who say they want to build something that matters, uh, scuff at even getting their first trademark registered, just completely different level of mentality, completely different level of understanding the value of the brand. So again, let's keep going. So to have another table here and say, well, we've got the following valid and subsisting U.S. trademark registrations. And okay, well, all of these trademarks. Okay. okay. Then they say each of these registrations issued well before September 22, 2015, filing date of registrants, cat and cloud mark, and the first use using commerce date of July 22nd, 2015, alleged by registrant. So they have to say that all of these trademarks that we own that generate tens of millions of dollars to us, all of them were registered long before this coffee shop decided to register their trademark and long before this coffee shop first used Cat and Cloud to sell apparel. And then Caterpillar says, the existence of these valid and subsisting federal trademark registrations is prima facie evidence of the validity of the marks and Caterpillar's ownership of them. So, I mean, there's multiple ways to pronounce the Latin phrase, but the whole idea is that the trademark registration gives you the presumption of ownership and validity. It means that if you got the trademark registration and that's still valid, then you have by default the presumption of owning that mark. And that's all you need to do to prove that. Now, that is enough evidence to claim the right in the mark. That's what prima facie really means. Then they say, moreover, the registrations are incontestable and constitute conclusive evidence of Caterpillar's exclusive rights to use the marks for the products and services specified in those registrations. So after five years in US, a mark becomes incontestable, which means that they no longer have to prove beyond uh, the, showing the registration that it's their mark. Uh, because in the first five years, uh, it's more open to the world to say, well, actually, it's not theirs, it's ours. We have prior use, so nobody alleged prior use and the mark became incontestable. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, so they say a few more things about how great they are. And now they go to Cat and Cloud's registration. So they say, well, here's what Cat and Cloud is. They've registered this trademark. Okay, so first they say there's likelihood of confusion, right? They say that Caterpillar is used in commerce and registered the cat marks well before registrant. And uh, they say that registrants, cat and cloud mark, so resembles Caterpillar's prior used and registered cat marks and the goods covered by Caterpillar's used registered marks are identical such that consumers will likely be confused, mistaken, or deceived as to the source of the party's respective goods under Section 2D of the Langham Act. So what they're saying is forget about coffee, forget about trucks, look at this in isolation. We own the mark for apparel, okay? Doesn't mean what our, doesn't matter what our main business is, we have the trademark for apparel. They also have a trademark for apparel. Forget that they're a company that does coffee. They have a trademark for apparel. We were there long before they did we have trademarks that cover exactly the same products and services and 
their trademark just happens to fully contain our mark in it. And we have a problem with this because we think that this would cause confusion. And they say also that uh, this would cause dilution of the brand, which is their primary concern. So they say through extensive use and, uh, and promotion, Caterpillar's marks have become distinctive and famous. And uh, they say that Cat and Cloud's mark is likely to dilute the distinctiveness of Caterpillar's famous cat marks. Uh, and uh, that makes sense in this uh, because they say, look, if people can create new brands and register them by adding something to cat, cat and this, cat and that, then the distinctiveness of the brand cat by itself is diminished because the distinctiveness of cat and cloud really is by adding and cloud. So if they all share cat, then there's really nothing distinctive about that anymore. So I can see the, the, the reasoning behind that argument. Now, what happened then is that cat and cloud, they didn't surrender. They filed a response and they filed what's called a motion to consolidate. So let's go through this. Uh, so registrant, Cat and Cloud, uh, say that uh, they answer each allegation and uh, here's what they say. Uh, when somebody tries to cancel your trademark, when there's a lawsuit, they file their initial document and uh, they make some statements there to say, we are great guys and they are horrible guys. So please give something to us. So when the defendant responds to that document, they have to say, well, they said that they're great guys, we disagree. They say that we're bad guys, we disagree. So this is really what's happening at the opening part of the response. So basically they say, uh, you know, registrant is without sufficient information to admit the facts contained within paragraph one of the petition. And on that basis, petitioner denies the allegations contained in paragraph one of the petition. So there's really different wording that people use. Uh, in many ways, it's used to uh, piss off <laughs> the, the other side, but also you don't want to admit things that you don't necessarily have any real knowledge about. So for example, you know, Caterpillar says, we made $45 billion. Cannon Claus says, we have no idea if it's true or not. So, you know, don't make us admit this or not. We, we have no clue. So they keep saying the same thing, paragraph one, two, three, four. And then for paragraph five, they deny allegations contained in paragraph five. So if they know or they have some thoughts about why this is wrong and it actually matters to them, they won't say, well, we don't know. Uh, they'll just say, no, we disagree, we deny. All right, so they just keep going through this. Uh, and uh, then they say more. They say they deny allegations in paragraph six. In fact, registrant asserts that a generic consumer would not associate the word cat exclusively with petitioner and a person who states, I'm going to get a cat, would be taken to refer to a domesticated animal and not petitioner specifically. Further, while the mark cat used in connection with heavy equipment sold by Caterpillar, uh, itself a common English word for an insect, may be well known to a small segment of the population in the heavy construction industry, there are hundreds and hundreds of existing principal register marks for a plethora of various goods and services that contain the common English word cat. On these basis, registrant denies that petitioner has any right to preclude continued registration of the mark by registrant. Now this makes zero sense because just because there are other cat marks for other products doesn't mean anything in terms of caterpillars right in the mark for apparel, right? So, and 
the fact that cat means an animal in many people's minds or that caterpillar is an insect is absolutely irrelevant. <laughs> it's absolutely irrelevant. It's like saying, you know what? Most people associate apples with a fruit. They eat them and they can be red or they can be green and sometimes they can be yellow. So we just started this little software company and thought we'd call it Apple because we love apples and because a lot of people love apples. Uh, and this big company is trying to bully us into surrendering this name that we chose because it's such a great name and we all love apples, right? That's just bullshit. And uh, why they put it here like that, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think they're really hoping that this would go anywhere. And then they keep going with, we don't have enough information. Also, they have this little footnote here, uh, which is, I guess, worth reading. They say, registrant notes that petitioner, so Caterpillar, has embarked on a systemic enforcement campaign in recent months, seeking the removal of prior existing registrations in multiple classes, including class 25, that contain the word cat, but which appear to raise no real issue of likely confusion or dilution. Uh, so they got, they go after Nala cat, Cherry cat, Fun cat, Hell cat, ST cat, Phobe cat, King's cat, um, notably registrant, finds it interesting that petitioner has failed to file any opposition or cancellation of the target brands mark for cat and jack uh, or dr seuss enterprises for cat in the hat for their clothing products that's interesting uh petitioner has effectively obtained multiple default judgments against these small businesses and individuals but not target or dr seuss who are known to have excellent trademark counsel raising the issue of trademark bullies which has been discussed broadly amongst trademark practitioners over the past several years. Registrant posits that this is such a case as well and brings a motion to consolidate the current set of petitions that petitioner has filed against the various registrants owning federal trademarks subject to a current petition to cancel by petitioner. Okay, why they had to put this in a footnote, I have no idea, but let's keep going. They, they say the same thing again. We either deny or have no idea. We, you know, admit that this or this. So just more formal stuff. And then there's a section that they go, they called affirmative defenses. They say all of this stuff, yeah, we either admit, deny, or have no idea about, but we also want to say a few things. So here's what they are. First one, Failure to state grounds for cancellation. Uh, registrant is informed and believes, and they're on alleges, that the facts set forth in the petition are insufficient to justify cancellation of its registered mark. So they say, uh, we, we don't really understand why they want to cancel our mark, uh, even though in the cancellation, they specifically uh, cite prior uh, likelihood of confusion with a previously registered mark and also the dilution of the brand. Uh, then they say no priority of or likelihood of confusion. They say petitioner has not previously used the mark which is likely to be confused with the registrant's mark. Okay, so here what they're trying to do is to say the marks are very different. So yes, goods and services are the same. Uh, yes, you have prior rights to the cat trademark, but our mark is totally different. So there's no likelihood of confusion and you haven't proven that. Number three, uh, estoppel, waiver, acquiescence, and latches. Petitioner is stopped from asserting any exclusive rights to a trademark or service mark, including the word cat, and petitioner's claims against registrant are barred under the doctrines of waiver, acquiescence, or, and latches. Again, here they say uh, they don't provide really a lot of specifics. Right? All they say is uh, because Caterpillar didn't mind us having this brand for a certain time, uh, they shouldn't mind it ever. 
and there's this doctrine of doctrine of estoppel that basically says if you knowingly allow somebody to uh, infringe on your right, uh, then after a certain period of time, uh, the the person who's infringing uh, basically can rely on your inaction as a license for you to continue doing what you do. That's you know simplifying this whole idea. Then they say no exclusive rights. Petitioner does not have any exclusive right to the use of the word cat alone or in combination with any other letters, terms, graphics, stylization of words to form a trademark. Well, this is kind of the opposite of what owning a trademark registration means. So Caterpillar does own that exclusive right, but not in general. They own that right in connection with specific products and services. And that's what all their trademarks state. So let's keep going. Unclean hands. Petitioner has engaged in acts continuing. Petitioner has engaged in acts constituting unclean hands in filing its petition and in the conduct of this cancellation proceeding and should therefore be precluded from asserting any rights against registrant. So unclean hands theory uh, basically says uh, this. Even if by law, you write, if you do something that's kind of tricky, that you do something that's not fair, that you do something that would generally be considered as not nice, <laughs> then the court may look into that and say, you know what, you may be right by law, but because you're an asshole, uh, we're not gonna give it to you. This is, again, a simplified version of the unclean hands doctrine. Uh, it's not triggered all that often because uh, unless there's some really egregious behavior by the plaintiff, uh, it's very difficult to prove. So let's keep going. Uh, failure to function as trademark. Registrant is informed and believes that there is no likelihood of confusion, mistake, or deception because registrant is informed and believes that petitioner's mark as used in commerce does not function as a trademark or no trademark significance such that purchases of goods do not exclusively identify petitioner with the mark. Oh, really? So it's, it's really a stretch to say that to a company that sells tens of millions of dollars worth of apparel that those who buy that apparel don't realize that it comes from a particular source. And really, that's what trademarks are all about. So let's keep going. Mark not famous. Registrant is informed and believes uh, that petitioner's mark is not famous, nor is famous as associated with the assorted goods and services. So a uh, mark that's recognized as famous has stronger reach uh, when it comes to others trying to grab or use a similar brand, uh, maybe in different industries, maybe in different, for different products and services. So a famous mark gives you more and wider scope of protection. And so what Ken and Cloud is trying to do is say, nope, that's not famous. Uh, even though the petitioner, Caterpillar, in their original petition have a few paragraphs that cite some court cases when the mark was recognized as famous. So there will be some back and forth around that as well. And so after listing all of that, they say, we request that this petition cancellation proceedings be dismissed with prejudice uh, and uh, registrants registration be maintained. Service has been blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's what uh, Cat and Cloud say. And finally, the third document is when Caterpillar responds to what Cat and Cloud filed. So let's go through that uh, also briefly. So petitioner's motion to strike certain affirmative defenses in opposition to registrant's motion to consolidate. So Caterpillar says Ken and Cloud did two things. Uh, first, they had all these uh, affirmative defenses when they said, we don't believe in this, we don't believe in this, we don't believe in this, uh, and Caterpillar wants to throw some of them out. Uh, and also, uh, Caterpillar says that in their response, Ken and Cloud asked to consolidate multiple proceedings into one, and Caterpillar says, 
No way, Jose. So let's go through this. So Caterpillar moves the board to strike certain of Cat and Cloud's affirmative defenses from the answer, namely affirmative defense number one, two, three, five, and eight. Uh, on the ground that they are insufficient, immaterial, or redundant. And also, they oppose Registrant's motion to consolidate, which is seeking consolidation of the current action with eight pending oppositions and cancellation actions filed by Caterpillar. All these nine actions involve different applicants, registrants, different marks, different goods and classes, and different issues. There's no common question of law or fact required uh, under certain laws, uh, and uh, it's unclear from Registrant's motion to consolidate whether it even informed the different applicants, Registrants, of its consolidation request, let alone obtain these parties' consent. So this is uh, very interesting. This is this is actually this is classic because here's why Ken and Cloud asked for this. They say, look, we don't have the money. Uh, and uh, it's difficult for us to fight this monster with almost unlimited resources that they can throw at their lawyers. Uh, and we see that there's a bunch of other people uh, in the same boat, uh, that a caterpillar is going after them, and they probably also don't have the money. So what if we could put all of these proceedings, consolidate them, so that we could share the resources and together we'd be able to withstand the pressure from Caterpillar. Uh, kind of makes sense. Of course, Caterpillar doesn't want it. They like the fact that they can outspend uh, their, uh, the, the, the other side. But, uh, but they also, from the legal perspective, Caterpillar's argument makes sense. They say, look, we understand you're small. We understand you may want to join forces, but how can we really do this? Think about it. I mean, um, there's different trademarks. And so the, the board will have to make a new decision for each of these cases anyway. Products are different, goods and services are different, classes are different, right? They, have, they can consolidate this. Uh, and the parties are different, right? And the, the other thing they say is, did you even ask those other people if they want to be consolidated with you? You just had this great argument, but we see no evidence that all those other companies really want to be joined in with you. So let's keep reading. So they say, well, relevant factual background. Uh, they say that they filed a petition. Uh, they filed an answer. And uh, Caterpillar is moving to strike the following affirmative defenses. Uh, failure to state grounds for cancellation, no priority of likelihood of confusion, estoppel, unclean hands, and mark not famous. Okay, so they just list the things that they want to strike. Uh, and uh, uh, they also say that Registron filed motion to consolidate. So this is the, the background. And this is what the uh, uh, cat and clouds attorneys wanted to consolidate. So the sushi cat, muscle cat, Cat Daddy, Fassy Cat, Touch Cats, Cat Bug, you know, all of these cats. Uh, and uh, uh, the Caterpillar says it's unclear whether a registrant obtained consent from these entities before filing the motion consolidate. And so they, here's their argument. They say the board may strike from a pleading any insufficient defense or redundant immaterial, impertinent or scandalous matter. Uh, affirmative defenses like complaints must be pled with enough specificity or factual particularity to give the plaintiff fair notice of the defense that is being advanced. And really, if you look at uh, what Ken and Cloud's counsel said, it's just not enough meat there. You don't really understand what they're trying to say. And you're not supposed to keep guessing. This is the point, right? It's the point of procedural fairness. If you make an argument, uh, make it in a way that the other side has a way to respond to it with more than like, what the hell does that mean? So let's keep going. Uh, affirmative defenses, which amount to nothing more than mere conclusions of law and are not warranted by any asserted facts, have no efficacy, okay? 
uh, and they say the board may grant a motion to strike uh, on its own initiative, strike from a pleading any insufficient defense, in any matter that clearly has no bearing on the issues of the case. Affirmative defense assumes the allegations in the complaint to be true, but nevertheless constitutes a defense to those allegations. Okay, so here's what they do. They say, for the reasons discussed herein, registrants' affirmative defenses are legally insufficient and improper, and Caterpillar respectfully requests that the board strike these defenses in their entireties to avoid the expenditure of unnecessary time and resources on irrelevant issues. So see, Caterpillar is really worried about uh, time being unnecessarily consumed because I'm sure they uh, want to um, uh, to minimize the cost for uh, the opposing counsel, right? <laughs> okay. That's, so the first one they say, first affirmative defense should be stricken as insufficient and improper. Uh, first affirmative defense, which alleges that Caterpillar failed to state a claim upon which cancellation can be granted is not valid affirmative defense and should be stricken. Okay, so I'm, I'm, they're citing cases. I mean, you can read the, uh, you know, the whole document yourself. But the cool thing here is this. They say to state a proper claim, Caterpillar needs only allege such facts that would, if proven, establish that it has standing to challenge registrants mark and that a valid ground exists to cancel the registration. That's all they need to prove. Regarding standing, Caterpillar must show a real interest in the nature of a direct and personal stake in the outcome of the proceeding to establish standing, right? And of course, they've got a registered trademark. And to state a claim of likelihood of confusion, Caterpillar must plead that, one, its marks as applied to its goods and services so resemble the registrant's marks as to be likely to cause confusion, mistake, or deception, and two, uh, priority of use and or registration. Here, Caterpillar has stated a legally sufficient claim of likelihood of confusion. In particular, Caterpillar has pleaded prior use and registration of its asserted cat marks, and they've alleged that registrant's cat and cloud mark so resembles Caterpillar's prior used and registered cat marks and the goods covered by Caterpillar's used registered marks and registrants cat mark are identical, such that consumers will likely be confused, mistaken, or deceived as to the source of the party's respective goods and services. And they also talk about dilution, say to state a claim of dilution, uh, board looks at the following elements, whether the opposers Petitioner's mark is famous. Whether the opposer's petitioner's mark became famous prior to the date of the application to register applicant's registrant's marks. And three, whether the applicant's registrant's mark is likely to blur the distinctiveness of the opposer's petitioner's famous mark. So really all they have to do is say, our mark is famous. It became famous before that other trademark registered and uh, that other trademark is blurring the distinctiveness of our famous mark. That's all they have to say. And here again, Caterpillar has alleged facts sufficient to satisfy each of the required elements. Okay, so they alleged, among other things, uh, that its asserted cat marks are well known, commercially strong, and famous, that the asserted cat marks became famous well before registrants' filing date or first use in commerce date, and three, that registrants cat and cloud mark is likely to dilute the distinctiveness of Caterpillar's famous cat marks. So they, they put that in their pleading. They don't have to prove everything at that point. There's just a petition. So they say, we've said why we think there's a, there's a problem with dilution. We are going to prove that, don't worry. Uh, but we've pled it with enough specificity so you know exactly what our argument is going to be about and you know exactly the things you need to disprove in order to win. So this affirmative defense is no good. That's what Caterpillar is saying. And then second and eighth should be stricken as redundant. Uh, and they say they do nothing more than restate a denial in the answer and could not add anything to such denials. So their second 
is that there is no likelihood of confusion. And their eighth is that the mark is not famous. So the, these affirmative defenses do nothing more than restate and amplify registrants' previous denials uh, of petitioner's claims. And uh, the bulk of applicants' listed defenses are not true affirmative defenses, but constitute am amplifications of applicants' denials of the allegations of likelihood of confusion and likelihood of dilution. So again, you simply saying that no, this is not true, uh, or this is the fact that we're going to disprove does not create an affirmative defense, right? An affirmative defense is even is when you claim that even if the facts that petitioner alleges are true, it's still not enough for them to win. So this is very different from uh, what you need to have, which is rightfully noted by uh, Caterpillar's lawyers. So number three, they go with uh, registrants third and fifth affirmative defenses should be stricken as insufficient. Uh, and they say that Caterpillar, that these defenses, uh, the, the, that Caterpillar's claims are barred by estoppel, waiver, acquiescence, latches, or unclean hands are insufficient and should be stricken. Affirmative defenses must include sufficient detail to give the plaintiff fair notice of the basis of the defense. Here, registrant makes no factual allegations whatsoever to support the affirmative defenses of estoppel, waiver, acquiescence, latches, or unclean hands. Right? So they say, well, look, okay, so you said we're assholes. Well, we'd like some specifics. <laughs> what did we do wrong? <laughs> right? Or uh, they say, hmm, you say that we've acquiesced, that we're stopped from going after you, how come? What specifically are you referring to that we can either admit or deny? None of that is uh, explained with sufficient specificity in the uh, cat and clouds response. So let's keep going. Uh, as such, Registron has failed to plead facts sufficient to meet the pleading standards under Rule 8A2 and these defenses should be stricken. And then they also go about the opposition to motion to consolidate. So they say a board may consolidate separate actions if they involve a common question of law or fact. In determining whether to consolidate proceedings, board weighs the savings in time, effort, and expense, which may be gained from consolidation against any prejudice or inconvenience that may be caused thereby. As the moving party in this case, the registrant bears the burden of persuading the board that consolidation is appropriate. And they say, no, it's not appropriate because requested actions for consolidation do not involve common questions of law or fact. Right? This is the argument. They say, presence of a common question of law or fact is a prerequisite to ordering consolidation. Although the term common question of law or fact is not defined in either federal rule uh, or uh, the uh, opposition board's uh, manual, uh, the plain meaning of this phrase indicates that a common question is one that must be answered identically in each case in which it is presented. Okay? The board denies Consolidation requests where the parties and marks are different. And so again, goes through a bunch of uh, examples and they say, uh, you know, uh, this case, that case, there was no common question of law. And they say, here's all the marks that we've got that we're trying to cancel uh, and um, or, or oppose. And look at them. They're totally different. Right here are the issues, here are uh, uh, the, 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 the trademarks, here are the parties. And they say, because of the above differences, written discovery, document production, party depositions, and expert testimony will undoubtedly be different for each proceeding, resulting in vastly different testimony periods and records. Further, this, these differences will result in different analysis of the likelihood of confusion claims in addition to the separate analysis required for the fraud and abandonment claims raised in certain of the proceedings. Yeah, and they say, 
that Canon Cloud's reliance on a case, a uh, certain case is misplaced because that case support consolidation in very different circumstances where pending oppositions and cancellation proceedings were consolidated uh, that involved the same parties in identical or closely related marks. And here the circumstances are entirely distinguishable as the parties and marks involved are different. Okay, And in view of the above, clearly no common question of law or fact between the requested actions for consolidation. And uh, the second argument is that consolidation is not appropriate because answers have not been filed in several of the requested actions for consolidation. They say, but well, further consolidation is inappropriate because no answer has been filed in a number of the requested actions for consolidation. And generally the board will not consider a motion to consolidate until an answer has been filed. So if the defendant does not file anything in response, they get default action, default order against them. And you can't consolidate this because in, in, in theory, that other party is not even, uh, has not appeared, has not filed their appearance. And, uh, you know, there's no, there's no response. They say answers have been filed in only four of the requested actions for consolidation, including the pending cancellation, uh, this, 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 and that and answers have not been filed uh, or notices of default have issued for the remaining requested, requested actions for consolidation. And, uh, you know, uh, even if the board finds there be common questions of law or fact, consolidation of these matters is not yet appropriate and may prove unnecessary pending the outcome of the defaults. Okay? And then they say, well, judicial economy weighs against consolidation. Uh, they say, well, because of all of that, Unless common evidence predominates, consolidated trials may confuse the jury rather than promote efficiency, right? Uh, that basically what they're saying is that this is going to make things even more complicated than they already are because of these different issues. So don't even go there. Uh, and further, there is no representation in registrant's motion that it has informed or obtained consent from any of the entities that would be subject to consolidation, a party should have a right to consent or at least be informed of any consolidation request. Without such consent, the board could face subsequent challenges from these parties objecting to the consolidation and or parties refusing to cooperate with the other consolidating entities. This prejudice and inconvenience to all of the involved parties strongly weighs against consolidation. So that's that's a great response because part of it is debasing itself on just the procedural issues, uh, but also a lot of it is substance. And uh, it's a great, great example of uh, good lawyership uh, because unlike the response from Kevin Cloud that was kind of tongue in cheek, uh, you know, talking about cats and insects and, uh, you know, using footnotes and, uh, all, all of that and talking about bullies. This one goes straight to the point. And uh, uh, there's a lot to learn there. All right, now just some final thoughts because I never really thought that this video is gonna be so long. Um, like I said, the optics, having said all that, even though I believe that Caterpillar is correct uh, in what they're doing, uh, the optics are not great because everyone thinks, well, that's coffee, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's big trucks. I think what will eventually happen is uh, they will settle uh, that the uh, that the coffee shop will agree to remove uh, the clothing from their registration, you know, so strip it out, uh, only keep things that relate to coffee, and I'm sure they will get some 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 sort of a a consent from Caterpillar that as long as they continue to put and cloud at least as prominently as uh, the word cat uh, in a different font and all of that stuff that there's no likelihood of confusion and also as long as they limit how they make their clothing uh, available to others they might be permitted to continue those sales this is my guess this is where it's gonna go uh, Caterpillar has a great position. 
they got something very valuable to protect and uh, I don't think they're, you know, they're gonna take no for an answer. But also they wanna preserve good optics, so they may be willing to, you know, not fully uh, go full on after this coffee company and totally destroy it. Unless the coffee co company just becomes so stubborn uh, in their desire to have a war the David and Goliath war, so they feel themselves like a victim. They already spent 10K, uh, and uh, you know, they'll be spending a lot more if this continues to go on. So, you know, it's more of a victim uh, than a real business decision, in my, in my, in my view. Uh, so again, we'll see where this goes, and that'll be an interesting one to watch. If you found this video interesting, and you haven't subscribed yet, well, subscribe right now and get notified whenever the next one goes live. And if you've got a brand that you wanna protect, because you see Caterpillar trademarked thousands of trademarks, and now they, the brand generates business for them. Why do you think people are spending tens of millions of dollars on apparel from Caterpillar? It's not because the t-shirts are better quality, it's because they, carry a certain brand. That's the only reason why. And uh, the brand is now working for the business. First, you work for the brand, then the brand works for you. So if you want to grow a successful brand, you can't do that unless you properly protect it. So if that's you, if you want to protect your brand, go to trademarkfactory.com and book a free call with our strategy advisor who will be able to help you uh, do what you need to do to get started on this process. And uh, until then, I'll see you in the next video.